Hey teachers, if you're looking for a fun new way to review content with your students virtually, I have got such a fun solution for you. In this video, I am going to show you how to create digital pixel activities inside of Google Sheets. Not only are these activities a lot of fun, but they're also self-checking. All right, before I jump on my computer and we get started, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Uh, doing so definitely helps this channel to grow and it makes sure that you are up to date when we release new content every single week. So let's go ahead and dive in. In case you are unfamiliar, digital pixel activities are activities where you can list out questions, review questions for your students to respond to. And every time your students put in a correct answer, a part of an image is going to appear. So once your students have answered all of the questions correctly, they're gonna be able to see the completed image. And since parts of the image are appearing every time they answer a question, these activities are also self-checking. So anytime we can cut down on grading, I think that is a huge plus. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to create these activities right now. Okay, so the first thing that you are going to want to do is you wanna open a new Google Sheet and I always type in the directions first. And I want you to notice that I have typed here only type numbers in the answer column. Do not use commas, decimals, letters, or any other symbols. And I am always very explicit about what students can and cannot type because you're going to see that when we type the formulas in to make this work, there's really um, no diversity in what answer students can type in. It, it can only be one way. So make sure students know that they what they can and cannot use when getting started. Now the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and type in our questions and our answers. So usually I just go ahead and make a column that says question, I'm gonna extend this so there's room for the questions and then answer and I'm going to bold this and I am just going to make this pixel art be a math one with just different operations. So we're gonna do a mix of problem solving and standard algorithm. Um, so I will type in a problem here and usually I go ahead and type in the answer and you'll see why I do this when we go to put in the formulas, but it makes it a little bit easier to check your work. So that's all you're going to do in terms of just typing your questions and your answers. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead and put all of the questions in. I don't think you need to watch me type out every single one. So let's go ahead and skip ahead right now. Okay, so I've got all of my questions in here, but we do need to clean this up a little bit. First and foremost, this is very, very important. All of your questions have to be on one line each. So like this question here, it is on two lines and that's gonna be a problem because when you go to make your pixel art, each of the rows need to be the same height so that way you can make squares for the pixel art. If you have rows that are different heights, it's not gonna be perfect squares and therefore your pictures aren't going to turn out. So we're just gonna highlight this row and I'm going to drag it until all of my questions are each on one line. And we've got a little bit more to go. One more, perfect. And then I can make this one a little bit smaller too. A couple of other tips that are just gonna make this a little bit easier for your students to read and solve. I like to highlight everything and then put a border around each row and column. It just makes it a little bit easier for students to line up the questions and the answers to make sure they're putting the answer on the same row with the question. Another thing you can do to make it so that students are putting the same answer on the row with the right question is you can highlight the rows and make them different colors. So a lot of times I'll do something like this where I go back and forth between white and another color. Just like I said, it just makes it a little bit easier for your students to line it up, especially if you have some where like this, where there's shorter questions and then there's longer questions. I've noticed that students can just get mixed up and start putting their answers on the wrong rows. So this is just something that's going to help you. Okay, so we've got all of our questions and answers in. The next thing we wanna do is create our pixel art. So I'm gonna start by highlighting this row and then dragging all the way to the end. Let me try that again, there we go. And what we wanna do is we wanna turn each of these into squares. So we're just going to drag this 
Let me drag it just a little bit more. There we go. So now we've got the squares where we are going to create our pixel art. And just so you know, as you get started creating your pixel art, if you find that you do not have enough space, you can highlight any column at any time, right click and then click insert row right or left and it will create a new one for you. So just highlight the column, right click and then insert. And you can create as many as you want. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually grab some pixel art to use. What I recommend is you open a new tab in Google and you either type in pixel art or easy pixel art. If you're just getting started, typing in easy pixel art might be the best and then click on images. And we've got a real simple one right here with this watermelon. So I might go for that one. And you want to try to find images where you see that it actually has the rows and columns divide it out for you so you can count exactly how many squares of each color to use and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Now there are some add-ons and Chrome extensions that will allow you to take a picture and turn it into pixel art but to be honest I don't recommend using those. I've tried it before. The images come out so pixely that it's really hard to tell what they are. And I also find that those add-ons and extensions I've used a couple, they all blow the images up so large that it's just, it's too big for these pixel art activities. So I think it's easiest just to create it myself. I'm also going to recommend that you do this using two monitors so that you can keep the pixel art on one monitor and your sheet on another. It makes it a little bit easier to go back and forth. If you don't have two monitors, make sure to check out my Google Chrome extensions for teachers video because there is an extension I talk about in that video that will allow you to split your screen so that you can look at multiple pages at one time. So let's go ahead and start creating this. I'm going to start with this column here and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six green. So I'm going to count out one, two, three, four, five, six green. And don't worry if you create this and then you feel like, oh, the picture isn't where I want it to be. I wish it was further left or I wish it was further down. You can fix that in the end and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth between the image that I found and this, and I'm just gonna create it. Um, in some ways I find this to be very relaxing. It's just kind of mindless and you just go through it like this, but it does take some time. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to speed this video up so that way you don't have to watch me making this for the next 10 minutes. So we're gonna speed up and I'll stop when I'm finished with the pixel art. All right, there you can see that my pixel art is done. And we can go ahead and clean this up a little bit because this one is not very big. So I can highlight all of the columns that I want to delete, right click, and then just delete columns. And I can do that on this side too. Highlight all of them, right click, delete columns. Now if I look at these and I start thinking, man, I wish these were a little more square. They look a little more rectangular. I can just highlight all of this like I did before and kind of move this over a little bit. And you can see now I made it so they're more square. So there's a lot of little tweaks that you can make at the end. Okay, so now we're actually going to go through and we are going to put in the formulas to make these squares disappear and reappear at the right times. So the first thing you're going to want to do, click on the first square that you would like to disappear and then click control and click on a few more. Now the number of squares you click on is going to depend on how big your pixel art is and how many questions you have. Usually what I do is I calculate how many squares make up my pixel art and divide that by the number of questions and then that helps me click on an even number for every question. So once you've clicked on your squares, you're going to click on format up here at the top and click on conditional formatting. You will see that all of those squares that you clicked on can be found right here. 
Now we want to change this to format cells if and scroll down to custom formula is and we are going to type in that custom formula. The formula is equal sign, dollar sign, then you are going to type the letter of the column which is B, dollar sign, the number of the row which is four, then you are going to type uh, the arrow pointing left, the arrow pointing right, and you're going to type in the answer. Now remember, I did not use any commas here, just numbers. You can also, when you're doing a numerical response, you can also type in decimals, but no commas. Uh, for fraction activities, you cannot use the, backsl the backslash. This will not work usually for a fraction activity. I will create a key and then type in, have students type in a letter or number that represents the fraction. But for numerical responses, only numbers or decimals can be used. Now what we wanna do is we're gonna change the color to white. And basically what this formula says right here is for this column and row, B4, if this answer is typed in, we will see what should be here. But if this answer is not typed in, those boxes will be white. And you can check to make sure your formula is working by deleting the answer. And if the boxes appear the color that you, that you selected, which is white, that means that it's working. And then you're just gonna click done. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to click on some more boxes. So just click on one box and then click control and click as many boxes as you would like. Now we're going to click add another rule and we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. You'll see that all of the boxes that I clicked are here. We're gonna change this to custom formula is and then we're going to type in our formula which is going to be equal sign, dollar sign, number of the column which is still B, dollar sign, then the number of the row which this time is five, arrow pointing left, arrow pointing right, and then the answer, which is 180. Then we are going to change this to white and click done. And we can check to make sure it's working by deleting the answer. Okay, now I do want to show you, like I said, this can work with typing letters or words, but if you type letters or words, it's going to require a different formula. So let's say the answer to this next one is cat. I'm just gonna make something up, okay? So we are going to, once again, select however many squares you want. After you have selected your squares, you're gonna click add another rule. You'll see that those squares are listed here. Once again, we are going to change this to custom formula is the formula is going to be very similar. There's just gonna be one small difference. So we're still gonna type equal sign, dollar sign, letter of the column, which is still B, dollar sign, number of the row, which is six, arrow pointing left, arrow pointing right. But this time we're going to add a quotation mark, type in the answer, and then type in another quotation mark. So if you have a letter or a word, you must have quotation marks around it for it to count. If you just type cat without the quotation marks, this will not work. And I've also experimented with this, like do I need to use all capital letters or all lowercase letters? It doesn't really seem to matter. The important thing is that you have those quotation marks there. And then once again, we're gonna change this to white and click done and we can test it by removing it. So that's the only difference. When you use letters or words, you must have those quotation marks. Numerical responses do not need those quotation marks. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna speed this up. I am going to type in the formulas for all of these other responses, and then I'll show you how you can test this to make sure it's working at the end.
Okay, now the last thing that I always do before I finish one of these and push it out to students is I always go through and I check. And the way I check is just by going through and typing in the correct responses to make sure that pixels are appearing each time I type in an answer. If I type in an answer and the pixels are not appearing, that means I did something wrong with my formulas and I need to go back and fix that. So I'm gonna go through real quick and check these. All right, so it looks like I set this up correctly. All of the pixels are appearing when I type them in. And so this is ready to be sent out to students. And if you're not sure how to share this with students, we've got another video here on the channel where I show how you can share uh, sheets, forms, and slides. So make sure to check that out if you're not sure. So there you have it. That is how you create digital pixel activities inside of Google Sheets. and. I love these activities. I think students think they're a lot of fun. Really the only downside to these activities is they can take a lot of time to create. I've been making these for a while and I still find that it takes me a little bit of time to create even just one. But we do offer these digital pixel activities for every math SOL exclusively to our Virginia Teacher Club members. And if you are unfamiliar with what the Virginia Teacher Club is, this is a membership program we offer to upper elementary teachers in Virginia that provides high quality SOL aligned content for every single SOL. We're talking detailed lesson plans, review activities, worksheets, assessments, pretty much anything you can think of is inside of our curriculum library. Now we only open enrollment for the Virginia Teacher Club one time per year, but it's going to be coming up soon. So if you wanna be one of the first people to be notified when we open up enrollment into the Virginia Teacher Club, I've left a link down in the description for this video so you can get on our wait list and those people will be the very first to know when enrollment opens. So make sure to check that out and until next time, happy teaching.